when you're working at this level of um, uh, computer-generated and computer-enhanced involvement, uh, there's a lot of planning that goes on, and mainly that's because of the technical requirements of doing what we do. Let's get Ava in there just to frame it up properly now, because if there's a difference in height. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. My relationship with the director is to uh, look at what's happening in front of the camera and make sure that I can make that work with the effects that we add and the animation that we add later on. So that means um, when actors have to hit a certain mark or they have to have a certain eye line, I've got to be there and work very, very closely with the director to make sure that happens. So it's good for three plays? It's good for three plays. Well, oh, you got to like that coverage. Okay, so if we got that coverage... When I begin my day, I have, go through my day, I have this, these storyboard pages which show every scene. And the elements of the scene are all listed, like this one is live action set plus CG plus camera lock-off plus paint composite, all in this one scene, which we'll shoot later today. So every little bit. And uh, these things have been drawn and drawn and drawn and redrawn over and over and over. Let's go to the board. Where is the board? Lorette? Guys, I need the entrance cleared up again. Where's our board gone? I think that we're missing. The uh, connection, direct connection. The direct connection. I mean, we never have the complete connection. We don't have the over shoulder them seeing Kai it in the shadow. right here. Exactly. It's not a matter of remembering how long the cigarette was in the previous take. I mean, it's all these elements like, uh, for instance, we're shooting, one, we're shooting scenes here, which are, we're just shooting what we call plates, which is the background with nobody in it. Then we go and add the people, which we shoot in front of green screens, because that way we can make them glow, do special effects and all that sort of thing, and then install them back in the background. They have to exactly relate. We have to measure the angle of the camera, get the exact same lens, same, exact same camera position, often the exact same move, which means we use this electronically controlled camera. But we still haven't seen him go down on his knee yet, eh? Yeah, he's going to go down in this one. Do you enjoy this process? This I don't mind at all. It, you know, it's kind of like a permanent exam, though. So let's just, I would say you're getting hit, you're getting hit, you're getting hit. This is good. This is concrete. This is all like brains, and the brains have properties, and I have properties. And I can understand all that, and all those things are straightforward. The toughest thing is, uh, I don't know if you photographed the green screen, but when you're all alone in front of the green screen, imagining everything happening, that's really tough. Crash into the control box! There are bits of sets, there are a lot of smoke, a lot of dry ice, and everything is computer generated, so you don't really know what it's like. You, it's up to the boys in the back room who are going to either make or break. You're really in their hands, you have to trust them. This is Kai, one of our heroes, and his essence or his aura is being sucked out of his body by the bad guy, by his shadow. So David is working on the animation of the aura itself to make it look more nebulous, more gaseous, more dangerous. What Claude has done is added lighting effects so that as, an, as the aura is going around, it is lighting, relighting, hitting the whole set with highlights and you can see what he's doing is he's sort of like affecting different set areas and he's also affecting the actor and as the aura, the intensity of the aura goes behind the actor, he's backlighting the actor. So it's things like that that really sell the effect in the scene as opposed to just something that's been thrown on top of the scene. This is the other end of the spectrum where this is all completely computer generated and this shot is conceived, is born, lives and dies in this room. This is the mod. This is the, the static model, but we also have a computer-generated model of the same thing. People fly around inside the Lex in the moth, because in the dark zone, it's a very organic uh, insect kind of world, and uh, they live in, and work and travel in bugs. The reference for a lot of the uh, vessels have been more insectoid, and so, um, being from the south, uh, there's plenty of bugs down there. I brought this up so I'd have a good reference for textures and materials and coloration. This pattern uh, is actually based on a uh, southern female black widow. This is the, what would be the equivalent of, like a, I guess, a destroyer. Well, this is something I've been waiting most of my life to work on. I mean, uh, there's no kidding about that. I think the overall caliber of all the animators involved, the fact that we're giving being given as much creative license as we've been given and that the, the product itself is so novel, I think this is a great opportunity.